Why are narcissists haphazard? There will be many instances where you would look at the life of a narcissist or a suspected narcissist and think to yourself, look at the state of that. In and out of work, regularly sacked or resigns before the axe comes. Numerous relationships that never work out, primarily romantic ones, but haphazard friendships, falling out with friends and family only to make up and then fall out again. Repeated run-ins with the neighbours, possible transgressions with relation to the law. Up and down in terms of finances, physical health, mental health, and so forth. Why is it that the narcissist has such a haphazard life? And, moreover, why is it that the narcissist doesn't see this? Why is it that I can see it, his friends can see it, his family can see it? Everybody else around notices that this individual has a difficult and haphazard life. Yet, why doesn't the narcissist see this? What's going on? What's at the heart of all of this? Well, to begin with, it's important to ascertain that not all narcissists are haphazard. And not all narcissists are haphazard all of the time. Greater narcissists and ultra are not haphazard. Invariably in positions of considerable wealth and influence, they have no difficulty when it comes to the maintenance of a secure living and, in general terms, a particularly wealthy one. It doesn't mean that all greater narcissists are necessarily wealthy, but they are at the very least comfortable. Their finances are stable, if not supreme. They will, of course, move through a variety of relationships, picking people up and putting them down as and when needed. But that doesn't cause a difficulty to the narcissist, because the greater or the ultra chooses to do this, decides when to utilise the assistance of the secondary sources, be they intimate or not. There may well be a trail of intimate partner primary sources, but invariably the greater or the ultra is the one that makes the disengagement decision rather than those individuals escape. And therefore, they do not function in a haphazard way. Why? That is because the greater and the ultra, being conscious and aware, assert control both in the moment, but have regard to the impact in the future as well, and have the ability to look to control future outcomes. Therefore, greater narcissists and the ultra-narcissist are aware of collateral consequences. So take, for example, an individual threatens my control at a restaurant. I'm sat with other people. Because they have threatened my control, I must respond to that threat to my control. I know that I must do so. Instantly, my narcissism provides with me provides me with a range of options, liken it to being provided a various option of weapons. If you've seen the film John Wick, when he goes into the armory with regard to the relevant organisation that he belongs to, there's a huge array of weapons that he can choose from, and he makes a decision on operational need as to which, op which weapon he ought to utilise. It's the same for the greater and the ultra. Those narcissists are able to receive a selection of potential options and then choose one with regard to the achievement of the prime aims. So in the situation where somebody challenges my control, in a situation where I'm dining at a restaurant, let us say with friends or business connections, if I was to suddenly leap up and smash the plates and turn the table over, that would not be a sensible response for one such as I. Yes, it would enable me to assert control over the relevant individual by shocking them, but it would then cause disruption with regard to control over the secondary appliances that are all witnessing this sudden eruption of heated and uh, ignited fury. And therefore, whilst I would gain control, let us say, over the intimate partner primary source by shocking her into submission, 
the reactions of everybody else would result in a threat to control over them. Moreover, the facade has been affected, and therefore the collateral cons of the application of control in that moment results in a haphazard outcome. Therefore, I wouldn't choose that as a prospective outcome. It's an option that may well be offered to me by my narcissism, although invariably it would not, but it is not one that I would select. Instead, I would have other options available to me, ones which I would determine, because of my state of consciousness and awareness of my narcissism, as the more appropriate methods of asserting control. And therefore, I might choose a witty yet pithy put-down, a backhanded compliment that puts the intimate partner primary source in her place and draws laughter from other people. They think that I'm joking. She does not. Facade remains intact. Control is obtained over her. Control is maintained over the onlooking secondary sources. Job done with a dash of finesse and charisma. It is the way of the greater or the ultra. Somebody looks to stiff me in a business deal. Do I go around, kick the door in of his office, grab him by the ankles and dangle him out of the window? Tempting as it is, there could be repercussions with regard to criminal activity and law enforcement action, damage to facade. Therefore, my narcissism was cause me to respond to that threat to my control, but in a way which enables me to assert control over the person who is perhaps breaching the contract, but in a way which also doesn't threaten control, damage to the facade, etc. It might be then the instigation of legal action against this individual by hiring one of my team of expensive and impressive ball-washing bastards that lawyers are. Alternatively, I might deploy some subtle manipulation, some form of emotional or financial blackmail, done through the offices of others so that it is not connected to me, causing the individual to think again with regard to seeking to stiff me on the business deal. Facade maintained. Accountability rejected. They cannot trace it back to me, although they know that it is me that is behind it. Control has been asserted. There are a variety of ways. And that is the situation with the greater and the ultra. We have the capacity to ensure that we assert control in the moment, as well as to maintain an absence of collateral adverse consequences and to plan for future events. And that is why we are so rare. Thus, that is the situation with creators and the ultra. But what about the more common narcissists, the lesser and the mid-range narcissists? What of them? The reason that they are so haphazard is that their narcissism is focused upon the prime aims and the two most important aspects of those are fuel and control. Fuel is the rule. Control beyond everything. Lesser narcissists, of course, don't operate with a facade and therefore... The collateral consequence of them looking like an angry, unpleasant, obnoxious individual is irrelevant to them. There is no restraint on the manipulations by a flashing facade button upon that panel of manipulations in Narcissist HQ. So let us take, for example, a middle lesser narcissist. He turns up the third day running at work, late, driven by his sense of entitlement, lack of accountability and lack of emotional empathy. The warehouse manager says to him, this is the third day running that you have turned up late. You are now on a disciplinary. He has issued challenge fuel. That narcissist narcissism recognises the threat to control in his unconscious mind and instinctively needs to assert control. All the narcissism cares about in that moment is nullifying the threat to control and re-establishing it. It does not care for a facade. There is none. It is not thinking about what will happen in the next second. It will not be happening thinking about what will happen in the future. It will not be thinking about any impact upon finances, friendships, romantic relationships, status, employment. All it is focused on, with a laser intensity, is the necessity of nullifying the threat to control that has been caused by this warehouse manager and the assertion of control over him. Accordingly, the narcissism selects physical violence as the means of a direct assertion of control, and that middle lesser lands a blow full on the nose of the hapless warehouse manager. He is put on his back. What has the narcissism achieved? Control. Job done. 
Of course, in the next instant, which the narcissism has no regard to, he's sacked for gross misconduct. He loses his job. His income is affected. Does the narcissist care? He does not, because the narcissism rejects any sense of accountability. The narcissist does not slink away and think, oh bloody hell, what did I do there? I punched my warehouse manager. I'm a fucking idiot. I've now lost my job. That narcissist, if he even thinks about it, would think, he fucking deserved it. He had it coming. He's an arsehole. When that narcissist returns home and is met by his girlfriend who says, how was your day? And he turns around and says, well, that dickhead who's always been on my case, the warehouse manager, and of course he may not have been on his case, but that is the revision of history. The narcissist says, I gave him what was coming to him and punched him. Although the arsehole then had the audacity to sack me from my job. Although, of course, a middle lesser wouldn't use the word audacity, would he? He would turn around and say something like, I gave him what was coming and the fucker sacked me. The cheek of it. In that instance, the girlfriend may say, well, what the dickings have you done that for, you plonker? She issues challenge fuel. The narcissist then, governed by his narcissism, unaware, of course, of it, has to assert control over her. He turns around and says, well, fuck you. If you're on his side, you can, you can piss off. Get out. And he kicks her out of the house. He's just lost his intimate partner primary source. Does he care? No, because his narcissism was focused on control. Rudimentary, like a wrecking ball, it's now created the collateral consequence that he's lost a major provider of the prime aims. The narcissism wasn't interested in that. His narcissism as a middle lesser hasn't evolved specifically enough to enable him to protect that particular asset. Of course, he may well then go and find her where she's skulking at her mum and dad's and tell her to come home and stop being so silly and asserts control over her that way. But that's a future event. The narcissist, cheesed off by her behaviour, goes and sees his friend in the pub. How's it going, asks his friend. Shitty day, he says, doling out a bit of a pity play. After all, he is a middle lesser, so he has a bit of the mid-range about him. Lost my job. Girlfriend. Couldn't give a damn, so I told her where to go. And he elaborates on what has happened. Are you some kind of dickhead, asks his friend. You punched your manager, losing your job, and then you told her to get out. She's a great girl. What's got into you? Are you mad? Friend has now issued challenge fuel, and therefore the narcissist has his control threatened. What then happens? He has to respond with this comment. Well, you can get fucked as well, if you're going to take their side. Piss off, I'll drink alone. And he falls out with his best friend. In the space of a few hours, the narcissist has been brilliant at asserting control over all three, the warehouse manager, the girlfriend, and the friend, from his perspective. But he's lost his job, he's lost his girlfriend, and he's lost his best friend. But the narcissism doesn't care about that. Those are collateral consequences. The narcissism does not sit there, nursing a pint of lager, as he thinks to himself, I am a complete doofus. I have lost my job, I have lost my girlfriend, and I have now got lost my best friend. No, he has no self-reflection. If the thoughts manifest, all that will happen is, when they come up on the radar, his narcissism will dismiss them all by allowing the narcissist to assert control by withdrawal. He rejects them. I don't need them. Didn't need the job anyway. It stank. She's a stupid cow, and he's not really a good friend anyway. And of course, the next day, he's back with the girlfriend and he's back with the best friend because of compartmentalization. That middle lesser demonstrates the perhaps hazardness that occurs. Relationships, social ones, romantic ones, work ones, business ones, ones with the neighbors, finances, health, etc. All will be haphazard because the narcissist operates to the agenda of the prime aims, chief of which is fuel and control. Control comes first, everything else follows. And because he doesn't have the narcissism in the way that a greater or ultra has, or even a mid-range, it hasn't evolved in a way, so he does have this repeatedly haphazard approach. But it doesn't concern him, because the narcissism doesn't let him be concerned by it. If he was concerned by it, what would happen? It would affect his control, and therefore his construct would start to fall apart, and he would cease to exist. Instead... Whenever the thought might try to manifest as to cause him to think, oh dear, what a mess, or if somebody suggests that to him, his narcissism just deflects it, quashes it, rejects it, denies it. 
by asserting control over that threat. It is nullified. And thus the narcissist rolls along, continuing to assert control, not realising that he's lurching from job to job, from relationship to relationship, that some weeks he has no money, and that makes life difficult. But it's never his fault. If you were to sit down with that narcissist and say, look, you've had seven jobs in six months. What does that tell you? He won't say, I'm a difficult employee and have a real problem holding down a job. He will just turn around and say, most employees are assholes. I can't help it if they can't handle me. It's never his fault. And thus, the haphazardness which occurs in that narcissist as a consequence of his narcissism doesn't trouble him in the sense of any recognition. He may bemoan the fact that he's got no money, but that's because the last employer was a jerk and the state won't help him. It's not his fault. Mid-rangers will have a degree of haphazardness, not on the scale of the lesser, because their facade acts as a degree of a controlling influence. So a lot of the time, the narcissism will choose an option which preserves the facade. Accordingly, mid-range narcissists, although they can be, are less likely to be in and out of employment. Indeed, they tend to have very steady employment. They are seen as a pillar of community, a regular churchgoer, somebody who assists. Yes, occasionally he might be known for a little flash of temper, but generally he's a sound guy. Why? The intermittent facade of the lower mid-ranger is in place. Or he's known as being somebody who's utterly dependable and a really pleasant man. Because he's a middle-mid-range type A that operates that extensive facade of the overwhelming angel. Yet behind closed doors, when the facade doesn't matter, he's vicious and unpleasant and passive-aggressive towards his long-suffering intimate partner primary source. And thus, he might be married four times. But he won't see that that's haphazard. He will just see it that he's always been unlucky in love, self-pity, and that he can't help it if abusive women seek him out. His narcissism rewrites history and tells him that he is the victim. Accordingly, not all narcissists are haphazard. Greater than ultra invariably or not. Even where you might see some haphazard relationships, that does not cause any adverse consequence for the greater or the ultra. They chose for it to be that way. With mid-rangers, they are haphazard to an extent. But the presence of the facade manages to control a lot of their behaviours so that they stay in jobs, that they maintain friendships, that they come across as generally decent and respectable. But in the background, where the facade doesn't need to operate, there might be a scapegoated family member and invariably a devalued intimate partner, a primary source. Remember, ultimately, however, that the facade may have to give way to the issue of control. Often it does not, because there are other ways that the narcissist can assert control without damaging the facade. But ultimately, if there is a direct opposition between control and facade, even in a mid-ranger, that facade will have to break away. And that is when you sometimes do see a mid-ranger go berserk, because they had to, to gain the all-important control, because no other option was available, and the facade had to crumble. But more usually, it stays in place, reducing the level of haphazardness. And quite and with all narcissists, the mid-ranger will never ever see that it is their fault. Indeed, if you were to point out, similar to the situation with the lesser, why is it that you've been through, let us say, four jobs in two years, if, for instance, it's a lower mid-ranger, that narcissist will give you an explanation for each company as to why it didn't work out. Well, at that place, they were going through redundancies. I was just lucky that I arrived at the wrong time. There, my boss took against me because I was better at my job than him, and therefore he felt threatened by me. In that instance, I was the victim of trumped up allegations of sexual harassment, so that's why I had to leave. And with regard to that company, well, they weren't paying me enough, so I decided to bail. He doesn't see that it is his own nature that has resulted in a loss of employment on those four instances. He doesn't see that this is haphazard. All he sees is that he was the victim in each and every instance. His narcissism convinces him that everybody else is at fault and not him. With the lessers, they are the most haphazard of the narcissists. With 
tumultuous roller coaster rides through life. In essence, control and fuel must come first, everything else follows. And with a less evolved narcissist, this means that you get that haphazard routine that exists in relation to them. I'm H.G. Tudor. Thank you for listening.